province's program for contracting uh, renewable energy, um, biomass, um, uh, and a few other technologies. So what, um, what has happened, or what we see happening, is the province is uh, looking at uh, revamping the program. And the FIT program, as far as wind energy uh, is concerned, is no longer going to exist for large wind projects. Uh, rather, the province is opting to go back to an RFP or tendering process. Um, the change, you know, albeit large as consistent as the province seems to basically retool the process every two three years so uh, for those who've been around for a little bit you can attest to the fact that this is a second go round for for rfps um, i think the first one was in 2004 2005 and since that time they've uh, uh, modified the, the process for contracting like i said a number of times they went from rsps to SOPs, which is the standard offered program, to the FIT program. And now what they're looking at doing is a combination of FIT, as you mentioned, for certain technologies and a uh, tendering process for, for large wind and large solar. So in regards to the changes, and I'll talk about the first unknown, is the first unknown is when the province is actually going to hold its next RFP or tender. And, for those of you who may not know an RFP is, a, in this case, is a request for power. Um, is just the uh, terminology. The speculation is that the province could be looking at tendering uh, for, for large wind as early as the spring of 2014, which is going to be upon us fairly quickly. Um, part of the rationale for the change is in part to control costs. Um, I guess to increase the competitiveness of the process and no doubt because of um, pushback and some of the political fallout uh, that the FIT program has gone through is, is also I think uh, rendered some changes. Um, some other factors that are also truly known at this time uh, but are expected is the province is trying to put mechanisms in place which the good news for municipalities is greater revenue sharing. So they're, they're trying to figure out how they can um, manage that or what they can put in place so that the, the municipalities that do host these facilities uh, can see a more tangible um, more tangible support for, for their support and is it more dollars in the community. But again, at this time, they're not, they're not clear on exactly what mechanism that they're going to use. Probably property taxes is probably the, the most logical way for them to do it and that's what they're currently doing. Um, MPAC uses a formula when, a, when turbines are on property um, that basically calculates what the, the net change for the, the, the value in property should be and, and uh, the, the delta is what the municipality receives in the end you know, for the change. Usually these are lands that are agricultural, they get changed to industrial. Um, Some other um, factors we are fairly confident um, is that projects that are endorsed by their host communities will probably be the only projects that stand any chance of receiving a contract, although this is not a guarantee that they'll win. And I think we stated this last November when both Dave, Tim, and I were in front of uh, council before. Um, Certainly, there's other factors that haven't changed in regards to uh, projects that would be ready uh, to bid, and that would be uh, factors such as having a completed EA, um, First Nation agreements. Your financing has to be in place. You have to show land control. Uh, your mapping. Uh, if you work towards a generator's license, C of A, which is related to the sound levels. Um, arch your archaeology reports. There just has to be municipal consultation amongst other things. And the purpose um, tonight in me mentioning these things is, is, is not so much to reverse the decision uh, in regards to when we were in front of council last November, but really for us to get the dialogue going again. Um, and if the province does move forward with um, a tender in, in the spring of 2014, that doesn't leave a whole lot of time. 
um, especially from, from, from my end, from the developer's end, because there's still a fair bit of work to be done. Uh, since we were last year, really the only work that we've done on the project is, is in the area of land control, and that's really just extending the land options that we have in place. So with that, um, you know, we're prepared to discuss going forward again. It might, the intent wasn't to do it tonight, but it, all aspects of project development with the community because I think it was very clear when we were here that that hadn't taken place, or at least the feeling was that uh, a lot of people were in the dark in regards to our development and hadn't been kind of kept up to date. So right now I just really want to put all these matters on the, on the table to discuss with the community, with the municipality, in regards to the size of the project, the location of towers and any other ancillary equipment, timing and coordination of open houses, as well as any other modes of communication that you know, you'd feel would help uh, disseminate, disseminate the information properly through the community, um, and any other aspects of project development that you feel should be communicated or addressed. They were also prepared to go forward um, and to talk about such things as community benefit funds and any other support we can provide towards community building, you know, we'll put that on the table. So I, I said I didn't come here with a whole lot. I said it's just, I mean, my intent was to, to give a quick update right now. I said there's more unknowns in regards to what the province plans on doing, but we are pretty clear that it's going to be, like I said, an RFP process, not a fit pro pro process for, for large wind projects which would be essentially anything over five megawatts. Um, like some of the other technologies, be it solar, a small solar, small wind, biomass, will probably still be able to move through, through the FIT program. So that's still like an application process. Um, so that's it. I mean, there, there's, like I said, there, I, I didn't want to bring in a lot of maps and a lot of other uh, details tonight. I didn't want to talk a lot of numbers because that really wasn't the intent. Um, like I said, there take questions on, on fit changes um, and really kind of hear back in regards to, you know, what I need to do to kind of get this uh, back in the forefront. Um, uh, you know, this is a project that uh, we have spent um, over five years on and over $800,000 on. And, you know, I don't say that we have any guarantees that we're going to end up with a project uh, that has a contract, but we certainly would like to, to do our best to ensure, you know, that we've got all the boxes ticked off and we've done what we, we could to, uh, to get it to that point. So. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Council members, any questions or comments? With, uh, Councilor Baker? Thank you, Your, uh, Your Worship. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, thanks a lot for coming out and providing us that information. So uh, generally, the difference between the FIT application now and the RFP is basically instead of um, those who come in line first for the amount of megawatts that they're, they're providing, it's going to be the best What's, what's going to be the criteria that, other than the checkboxes that's going to determine uh, a project gets through or gets awarded? Well, there's going to be a number of factors. Um, certainly how far the project has moved through the development chain would be one. Um, there would be look at factors such as financing, um, if it's in place. Um, as I mentioned now, one of the big points will be if the project is being endorsed and being endorsed by the local community. Um, also, you'll have to ensure that uh, you are on site in regards to your setbacks, your sound levels, to all the other criteria um, that um, you're generally required to do anyways. So, so, so okay, so as long as the check boxes are there and you fill that in, it, is it have anything to do with the amount of, of uh, that the project will produce? Is that going to give you some criteria or some benefit? Yeah, let me answer that a, a little dip, a little bit differently. Um, what we gain, one of the things that we don't know is that uh, what we're hearing is the province won't do a, a province scale tender, that they're going to do it regionally is what we're hearing. So what they'll do is if they look at an area, let's say from London down to Windsor, they'll look at available capacity. So there may be 100 megawatts or maybe there's 200 megawatts that... Uh, um, 
developers can bid on and that's going to be different from one region to the next for for various reasons uh, like i said available capacity um, existing projects um, Possibly even the, the, the you know the, the the track record of the developer and operator might come into play. I, I can't really say on that, but capacity probably more than most will dictate who can involve themselves in, in a tendering process. And like I said the earlier, one of the reasons uh, I feel the province would be moving this in direction would be controlling costs because with the FIT program you come in with a guarantee guaranteed costs of uh, 13 and a half cents. Um, obviously the tendering uh, process would probably put bids in lower than that. Mm. Um, and there may be few companies, uh, fewer companies willing to bid because the financing at the end of the day may not work for them. You know, and, and I can't even say for ourselves at this time whether we're in a position where we'd have a, we haven't gone through all of the, the, the math at this particular time. So. Okay, yeah, thank you. Anyone else? Counter Bowen? Um, just a comment. I, I noticed in your presentation you mentioned some open houses. I, th I think that's an uh, important feature because if you can get the uh, public buy in, uh, then it's a far easier pr uh, process. And I think. Um, under the old system, uh, there were some issues there. Yes, and in, in, in regards to open houses, it's something that we've we've always done, and, and um, obviously we'll continue to do. The, the challenge right now is again not knowing exactly what the province is looking for. Um, what I wouldn't want to propose is for us to move forward with an open house in the, in the short term only having to repeat the process again if it doesn't meet the criteria that the province is looking for. So it, um, that's happened to us in the past. As I said, the, the province has had a pretty consistent record of kind of retooling uh, the process um, in a fairly large way, but every couple of years. So we've, we've been caught a few times where we thought things were moving in this direction, only find out that we, uh, we missed something. So, but I, I agree with you that um, that's definitely something that we have to do and, and, um, and make sure that uh, we disseminate the information as best we can to the general public. Councillor Bondi. Thank you. I have a question for administration, if I may. I, I would think it would be a planning question. So, and we have Mr. Watson here, so we're lucky. Uh, Jeff, what kind of uh, process do we have as a town uh, types of guidelines do we have when a new development is coming in for example a 15 to 29 uh, wind farm what type of public process would you recommend well uh, uh, we still have no authority over over how this is orchestrated it's entirely handled through the province so you know even if they change the rules today um, it's not likely that the town will have any more ability to influence when meetings are held or how meetings are held or anything like that uh, the OPA determines those things. So we're still in the same boat. Uh, the only thing I'm aware of right now is there's about 123 megawatts of power, which they've opened the door for, but it's mo uh, for the next six weeks from starting from November. And that's uh, only uh, pretty much for solar. So they're switching their, 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 their view now towards solar and biomass and away from wind turbines. So the wind turbines are now basically fending, the operators are fending for themselves. And so the rules haven't been set yet and we probably won't know the rules for some time yet. But we did, when we ever, whenever we re reviewed these processes, was look at the OPA for the, for the county you know, that we did for wind turbines and wind farms uh, before the powers to review them were taken away from us. But we still feel that the standards that we set should be the standards that we use. And so that's what we would follow. To follow, I think uh, I think that's a good start. I definitely agree with looking at uh, at all the work that we did in terms of where turbines can go. And I, my understanding is that Blue Skies Wind Farm was in a, a pretty good area for turbines, which was good. Um, but in terms of public process, like we as a town don't have any uh, set definitions on on how many people are are notified within you know what catchment area and I know I'm not using the right words but you know newspaper articles um, on our website just I just 
you know, it sounds like you're coming back. It sounds like you're here doing a little handshake and you want to come back. So when you come back, I want you to have all the tools so that you're ready and so that nobody is blindsided. Because I remember the last time you were here and, and uh, I don't want that to happen again. Because I do remember saying, you know, um, get all your ducks in a row. You know, you've talked about the community, um, the community infrastructure plan or, you know, um, grant that you talked about. So that's good. We're, we're building the foundation now. But I just think as a, as a counselor and as a town, we should have some type of framework so it's all laid out. So when developers come to us, they know which boxes they have to check to meet our criteria. And then it's not so much uh, personalities back here. It's, it's black and white. That's all I'm looking for. I don't know if that's something we can work on as a council. Thank you, Mr. Watson. As an example for the Harrow Wind Farm, which of course he was intimately involved, um, we sent out a thousand notices and uh, we basically drew an 800 meter line around the wind farm and everyone who fell within that got notice. And that was based on the official plan uh, policies that were set for the county and that's that we as planners had agreed to regionally and that's ones that, those are the ones that we were following. So the, there is precedent for, for following a certain format and if we can integrate that into what the OPA requires, we would. Anything further from anyone? No, okay. Motion received the report. Uh, Councilor Bowman and Deputy Mayor Malosh. Any questions? All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. Thank you very much, Tim. Yep. Looking for a motion to adjourn the meeting. Councilor Votes. Councilor Bondi. All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. Lord, by the strength of thy Holy Spirit, grant us a willingness to place service above personal gain and to respect our obligations of justice in our positions as members of the Council of the Town of Essex. Amen. Welcome, and I'll now declare the meeting for Monday, October the 21st open. I'm looking for the adoption of the minutes for October 7th regular. Oh. Declaration of conflict of interest amongst council members. Thank you very much. Okay, now looking for the adoption of the minutes for October the 7th regular council meeting. The agenda. Councillor Vokes, Councillor Bondi, any questions? To your worship, for the October 21st regular council meeting agenda, I have the addition of the delegation to council request form submitted by Chris Gelinas on behalf of the Essex Mural Committee. Thank you very much. Counter Vokes? If, if I could, Your Worship, um, even though I'm not on the agenda, I'm going to put a motion for it. And I would really like to limit it to 10 minutes this evening. And I'm going to put a motion for it that we have the opportunity to talk about, um, as a municipality, in, in our support for the summer games. I would like to see the position of Council. As we know, um, Deputy Mayor Malage had forwarded on to us a a, uh, uh, a memo, if you will, that talks to what County Council had talked about as it relates to the Summer Games. So the jury's out, obviously, on the position of each individual uh, municipality, and I think the recognizing the, the, our, our position of remaining transparent, I think it would be a good time to, and again, Your Worship, I'm asking limit it to 10 minutes a brief statement of each councillor where we stand with it and then it's no mystery to everybody else where we are with it and it kind of leads the way if you will so I, I'm going to put that in a motion looking for a supporter in support okay. okay do we have a seconder to councillor Bondi uh, any discussion before we all in favor of the motion oh councillor Baker where are we going to put this on the agenda uh, it don't matter. Council discussions. Is Council fine. discussions. Okay. Okay. But again, I, I'm, I'm so I'm so adamant that we restrict it to no more than ten minutes because it could go on all night. I think we all know what our positions are. We just need to exercise that a little bit. Yep. Okay. All in favor of the motion. Thank motion you. carries. Thanks. Okay. Uh, and Mr. Jalinas will be F under Councilor Scott presentation. 
Now, they're looking for the adoption of the minutes for October the 7th regular council meeting. Councillor Scott and Councillor Bowman, any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Uh, for the special meeting of October the 7th, also adoption. Council votes, supported by. Councilor Baker, any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Public presentations. Our first public presentation is this evening is the Kinsman Club of Harrow with Don Sove, director. Okay, Mr. Sove, welcome. And we just remind you to turn the uh, mic on when you're ready to talk. And this is regards to the updating council on the Atlas II Pavilion at Colchester Park and with the town support of concert music festival fundraiser at the Harrow Soccer Fields next fall. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Council, for giving me the time here to come before you today. I am just here to get an update and give an update as to the proposed pavilion to be placed down in the Colchester Park, uh, west or sorry, east of the pirate ship. Um, we have a five thousand dollar donation that was very generous by Mr. Zuckelman of Atlas Tube and also all the hollow steel uh, structural tubing that will be used to construct the pavilion if, uh, if we are able to move forward with that. Uh, my uh, hopes would also be that the town would consider utilizing the University of Windsor Engineering Department to do some sort of a contest to utilize uh, a really cool design of hollow structural tubing rather than just straight posts and rafters. Um, also, if the town's got it in the budget for, or going to be discussing it in the budget for next year, uh, sidewalks to have access to the park, the pirate ship, as well as the splash pad. I'm just wondering if you guys have any questions regards to that. I think the sidewalk issue will be dealt with at uh, budget deliberation, Dan. Does the town have any issue? Well, the Harrow Kinsman would like to nominate that the pavilion be named the Atlas II Pavilion, if that is a possibility, given all the generous donations that Atlas II has given to this community, as well as all its employees that work in this community be able to enjoy such a uh, building, I guess you can say, to use down there in the... Well, I think that would definitely be taken under consideration, for sure. You know, I, I wouldn't say at this time we decided that, but uh, considerable discussion will evolve, I imagine, with the naming of that, so I think his name would be front and center, I'm sure. Mr. Baker. Thank you. Through your worship, uh, to actually to, uh, to uh, administration, uh, Doug, your first uh, day here. Congratulations and welcome, and put you on the hot seat. Uh, as you, you know, you've uh, kept up to speed on what's going on. We've had um, some work done in the last um, year or so with an acoustics plan, which was a kind of a high-level landscaping design plan. <coughs> in there, there were some recommendations in terms of a pavilion. I think they were more grandiose, and, and they were just more of a positioning. So I guess my question is going to be, are we going to look at, uh, what are we going to look at from an overall design criteria? Because um, the one thing is that there's always been some interest to have a pavilion there. I'm not sure of what kind. So. Um, do we, what's the next process that we need to do in terms of, of um, moving forward some kind of a land, some kind of a design that'll that'll um, extend to the, the splash pad in that area where the pirate ships are I mean we have an overall design criteria that we're looking at this part and parcel of it, we really never we haven't moved forward on that we've picked pieces out and maybe I will go to a Jeff on this actually because Jeff's been on this so uh, I, I want to kind of know what our direction is with that and in that we do have some money and we have some materials for that pavilion so Jeff maybe you can help me out if, with that through you mr. mayor 
Um, we have $45,000 that was given by Gulf Suez toward the construction of a pavilion right at the corner of Jackson and uh, County Road 50. And that was more an information type of and shelter type of pavilion for, for cycle tours and that sort of thing. What Dan is talking about is a different pavilion, which would be more in the active park area uh, around the pirate ship and overlooking the bluffs and that sort of thing, which was a, a much larger scale. It's it basically sort of a multi-purpose type of pavilion uh, that will serve more than just as a shelter, picnic area, uh, uh, event area, that sort of thing. So the problem then is, is you want to come up with a theme which sort of integrates the two pavilions and the park itself, and, and basically the promenade leading down Jackson to the from you know between County Road 50 and the marina. Uh, the various discussions so far have been sort of an 18, 12 nautical type of theme, which which is reflective of, of the Colchester theme that's adopted in the secondary plan of, of of our official plan, but also which was brought out in other discussions, including the acoustics discussion. So it's more of a heritage historical theme. And, and that's something that should really should be set before any other discussions continue to see about design. So, so that's my question then. So first, the first step then would be to determine, A, that we, we definitely want the a pavilion in that particular area and design, decide an area that we would want it in. I mean, that's the first step. So I don't know what, because we're, we really don't have any specific positioning for one yet. We'd like to, I think that would be the first step, and maybe we can have uh, our friends being involved since they were so involved in, in getting the money for us to start with. So is that maybe what we can look at first? Through Mr. Mayor, location and style. Those are the two key considerations, first of all. Thank you. But the question to Jeff, you did say we had a, a spot for a pavilion. 15 Jackson and then this is a different one so really we did have one now we're going to we're going to have to alter that the, the in the meeting through you, mr. mayor the, the, the acoustics plan was a, more of an overlook type of uh, facility where it's a, a, like a, a, a pavilion looking out over the bluffs so you could see the beach you could see the harbor and that sort of thing but it was more of an aesthetic and and, and observation type of facility um, what Dan is talking about is a much more multifunctional, much larger facility. So the, you would have the, the, the smaller pavilion at the Jackson and County Road 50 intersection for cycle tourism and information signage and that sort of thing. And you'd have this then larger pavilion for multi-use in the active par portions of the park. So Councilor Baker's right. We have to get together and I know what's number one. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Mr. Sullivan, Counter Bonnie. Thank you. Through you, your chair. Uh, not so much for Mr. Sove, just for our uh, administration with Mr. Olson and maybe uh, Ms. Hunter. Do we have anything in the budget for a pavilion for 2014? I, I think it's something we should support. I'd love to see a, a shaded pavilion down there. I just don't know what our, what our plans are for 2014. Through your worship, at this present time, um, no, we don't have any funds in the budget for that. Um, but I think during count, um, budget deliberations, it was something we will we'll be talking about. Anyone else? Okay, we're looking for a motion to receive the report. No. Oh. oh, we want to talk about the uh, town support. Then. And then also regards to the Harrow soccer field to utilize as a music festival uh, fall of next year, if that was a possibility. I left some material with Mr. Sweet for uh, items that could be used or utilized to protect the turf. If the town was interested in uh, looking at something like that, because you can also use it for other areas to protect the turf and have an event where there's going to be a lot of foot traffic. Is that something that we could utilize that facility to hold such a, uh, an event? This event could draw between 5,000 and 10,000 people. Mr. Phillips. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through you, um, that's something administration can certainly take under consideration and report back to council. We have had previous groups uh, ha inquire about utilizing the the grounds those are relatively new grounds and I know mr. Olson has reported previously to me at least that uh, 
uh, we're trying to care for them as a soccer facility. We've got a couple of trenches where um, water lines or irrigation lines had uh, gone across them, and we're trying to maintain those. So there's there's some concern for the I, I think the the fields themselves and what precautions would have to be taken to protect them against a large uh, function like a concert and things like that. So we'll um, we'll certainly take it under consideration, and we can report back to council on that. We understand your request, though, Dan. Appreciate it. Scott? Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just want to make sure Mr. Sobey got his question answered about the naming rights. Uh, I, Dan, I think that Atlas is certainly s someone we should consider, and I think that's something that there is other opportunity through our town with some of our other sports fields and arenas and things like that they are going to be looked at as well as naming. I'm sure Doug, who has a lot of experience at, with the City of Windsor, will be able to help us with that. The other question is about and through you, Mr. Chair, to, to Donna or John, do we have money in the budget for the sidewalks currently or any kind of accessibility? I thought we didn't, we left something in this year for the pirate ship. Through your worship, there's nothing that I'm aware of that's in the budget for the sidewalks at the Colchester no, splash pad or pirate ship. Um, accessibility, I don't, I'm not sure if I can. Maybe Donna could answer that better than I could. <clears throat> so no, no, we don't. Okay. Anything further? Any more comments or questions? Okay. Now I seek approval of receipt of the. So uh, I, I do have, oh, if I may, Mr. Baker, through you, your worship. So. And this is more of just a comment to council. I know this has been an issue relative to the splash pad for some time. Accessibility is an issue there. Um, I, I really believe it's a high priority that we look at putting this in the budget. This has been now three seasons. The pirate ship has been up. The splash pad's going. And it's something I think we need to do. We have issues with accessibility, wheelchairs not being able to get there for their children. It's something we should focus on. So if I can just kind of appeal to council that, that we, when we're in budget deliberations, that this is the year we get it done. Some way, shape, or form, whether it's asphalt, whether it's something, something that we can make accessible to, to the kids to get to that. So thank you. Thanks, sir. Looking for receipt of the report. Councilor Bondi, Councilor Baker. Any questions? All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Can I just add that uh, out of this $300,000 project that we got going here on that pirate ship, that uh, the Harold Kinsman will be making its final payment here in the next couple of weeks, or sorry, next couple of months of $11,000 out of that. So I'm very happy to uh, say she's just about paid for. Good going. Councillor Baker. Uh, Your Worship, uh, there's another item on here, and I don't know if, uh, if Mr. Sobe is going to address it uh, on, on this report. He had asked about uh, a f um, uh, discussion of facilities. Is that something that you still want to discuss? Uh, I thought I was under your understanding that the administration still had to do some research and homework before they came back to me on that. Okay, well, that's the first I'd heard about it, so I didn't know it was on here. No, it's in the... Oh, is it? It's in today's agenda here. Uh, oh, so it's an addition. No. Oh, I apologize. One thing I could ask, I've, I've noticed on the pirate ship that we are getting a lot of young youths that really are out of age to be using the park are doing some destruction to it. Um, I'm wondering if I see some stuff has been replaced with pressure treated wood, if that's a possibility that could get addressed because we weren't allowed to use pressure treated wood on a playground facility. I think we'll have to revert, refer this to administration as to what's happening. Through Are we aware of this, Johnny? Through your worship, we'll have to investigate the use of pressure treated in the, in the code for um, playground equipment. Report, then we report back to them to be sure. I appreciate it. Other than that, thank you very much for your time. Welcome, thank you. Councilor Baker. 
Yeah, thank you, Three Your Worship. Um, because he's just brought this up, if I may, to uh, you to John Olson, and, and it's just speaking on this issue. We've noticed there recently over the summer there's been a fair amount of uh, vandalism at the pirate ship itself. Um, are we are 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 the uh, security cameras pointed in that area, and are we reviewing those security cameras? That's my first question. There's a camera on the west side of the splash pad facility, the change room, and it does shine over, point over towards the <clears throat> pirate ship. And yes, the staff down at the arena have access to that 24-7 when they're on staff, that the cameras are always going. They have access to, to any previous um, review for like five to seven days previous. So yes, they are looking at them quite a bit. Okay, thank you. So then. Following up on that, could I ask that maybe administration provide a report as to um, the, uh, the the different types of vandalism and what maybe the process is to repair those? I don't know who's involved in the repair of this. Is that something that kinsmen have to be responsible for, or are we responsible for the upkeep of the, the pirate ship? Because uh, I'm not quite sure. Through your worship, uh, well, the repairs are being done by the town. Um, we've just previously done some repairs to the the rubber um, tiles, which were still under warranty, and they were rectified, about, I believe, about two weeks ago. The pirate ship, we have replaced some pressure-treated um, material. Other than that, there really hasn't been any vandalism to them. Um, the main thing is kids, the kids climbing up by the, um, what do you call the the crow's nest? That's the biggest issue that we're having. So thank you. So then all those issues have been addressed then, is that correct? Better? To your worship, yes, that's correct. 